A lot of parents who unfortunately have to go through the battle of co-parenting with the narcissist come to me and ask the same question in different ways. How do I not raise a narcissist? How do I stop my children from becoming narcissists? Is there anything that I should be aware of? Are there some things that I should and should not be doing? Well, yes, there are a lot of things that you should be aware of and I'll be answering all your questions in today's episode. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. In today's episode, we are going to thoroughly understand how not to raise a narcissist. If that sounds interesting enough and you are eager to find out more, please make sure to subscribe before we begin because your subscription may help in spreading awareness about narcissistic abuse. Before I tell you how not to raise a narcissist, let's try to understand how a narcissist is raised in your situation where one parent is extremely narcissistic, is authoritative, punitive, vindictive and abusive and the other parent is kind, empathetic and connected. So in this situation what happens is the narcissistic parent keeps abusing, torturing, shaming, belittling, dehumanizing the child, inflicting deep core wounds and out of shame the other parent tries to better the situation but in a wrong way. What do they do? They unconsciously and unintentionally enable the child, idealize the child by giving them everything they know they are not getting from the other parent. This normal, kind-hearted, empathetic parent feels a lot of shame within. Why? Because they believe that it's them who put their child through this hell. Had they left earlier, had they not married the narcissist, this would have never happened. So what do they do? Unconsciously, they never say no to the child. They never set any boundaries. They do not help the child process their dysregulated emotions in the right way. They're always trying to make them feel happy, trying to make them feel better in whatever time they get to spend with them. And that creates a sort of distraction a form of dissociation, which is what a narcissist experiences. The traumatized parent remains in a constant state of survival, always trying to fight the situation, but unfortunately and unknowingly in the wrong way. Always trying to fix the situation by suppressing the shame, by distracting the child from feeling it, or by not properly guiding the child to address the situation in a healthy way. What does this do? It creates an imbalance. The narcissist underindulges. There is no connection, there is no empathy, there is no authenticity, there is no affection, there is no parenthood whatsoever. There is only control, direct or indirect. On your hand, if you are this kind of parent, you overindulge. You give everything to the child that they can't get from there. So this disorients the child in internally. As time passes, you become the doormat of the child. The child takes out that anger on you in unhealthy ways and because of your own guilt, you're not able to say no or you don't try to put a stop to it. You can't have boundaries because you're afraid if you have any boundaries, you are going to hurt the child further or you are going to lose them. And they will leave you and they'll go to the narcissist. You can now guess what happens. A narcissist is born who is so deeply broken that your enabling, unconscious, unintentional enabling creates their false self and they become totally unhinged and erratic. One thing I should make very clear, I'm not blaming you in any way, of course not. I'm trying to help you understand what could go wrong and what trauma does to you and to the child and how you can make it right. Back to the topic. So this adult child then totally destroys the non-narcissistic parent because they have been programmed that way. Unfortunately, there was no boundary ever, no proper healthy disciplining, no attunement, no connection. The parent was stuck in their own trauma, disconnected, trying to fix the situation while the narcissist was always trying to counter parent and destroy the situation. Now let's understand how not to raise a narcissist, what to do about this situation. First of all, do not avoid the truth, the reality. A lot of parents think, oh, by not addressing 
the situation by not talking about uh, the emotions, by not going in deep, they'll be able to protect the child. Of course not. That is wrong at so many levels. You are the same parent. You are the dual parent who has to play the role of both parents. You are the father, you are the mother. So unfortunately, it is a, it is a big responsibility, but it is yours. You have to address things as they are, meaning you have to help your children regulate their emotions. You can't blindly enable them. You have to be aware of your own shame and guilt that you feel and you can't let any of that come in your way. If you recognize there is underindulgence from that side, you have to indulge but not overly. Meaning you have to be warm, you have to be affectionate, you have to be healthy but in the right way. You can't always give them the chocolate, the toffee, the video game and this and that. No, you have to learn how to attune to them. You have to regulate yourself emotionally so that you can help them regulate their own emotions. In fact, there is a principle, there is something that I follow that I have created, A-L-V-R-E, it's an acronym, ELVRE, where A stands for attunement, L stands for listening, R stands for regulation, V stands for validation, and E stands for empowerment. If you were to follow this principle, what you would be doing is knowing how to attune with your child, sometimes physically sit with them, look into their eyes if they're throwing a tantrum. Maybe it's not a tantrum, they don't feel safe, they don't, don't want to do something. It's not that they are being disobedient, they just don't know what to do with all the stress they feel. Of course, their nervous systems are overly sensitive because they are experiencing what no child should experience. Then listen actively, not to reply, but to listen properly. What is the root cause of the problem? You have to be the coach they can't get to have in their other parent. And then you have to validate their worries, no matter how irrational they seem and sound to you. Don't personalize them. Don't make them about yourself unconsciously. See it for what it is and listen to their worries. Whatever their worry is, validate their pain, validate their sadness, validate what they're telling you. For example, if such a child tells you, you know what, mommy or daddy does not love me. Why? Because so and so happens. There's a situation that supports this example. But the, the idea is, child says, mommy or daddy does not love me. Now, out of your protective nature, what you could do is, you, you might want to say, oh, no, that's not, that's not right. He or she loves you in their own way. They love you because you're afraid that if you tell them the truth, they will be hurt. But what you are not realizing is that you're unconsciously gaslighting them. This is not the truth. And they know deep down, no matter how much you tell them, yes, it will confuse them, but they're not going to believe it. So what can you do to validate them in the situation? You can say, yes, unfortunately, it is how you say it. And I'm so sad that that is what you are going through. But let me tell you this, I love you deeply. A lot of experts on narcissism will tell you, oh, don't tell the child about the real nature of the narcissist. I'm against it. I say, show them what they're seeing, at least validate it. You don't have to use the word narcissist. If they're pointing out behaviors to you, don't cover them up. Don't say, oh, no, no, this and that. Don't distract them. Acknowledge and validate. And then connect to redirect. Help them understand what is the alternative. If they feel like their other parent does not love them, don't say, no, 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 they do. Say, I love you, I'm sorry. That is what you get to experience. It shouldn't be that way. And a, a child shouldn't feel that way with their parent. But I love you deeply. And then help them regulate their emotions. There are various ways to do it. You know, for example, play therapy. There are self-regulation techniques, a lot of stuff. But help them regulate their emotions. Maybe sometimes just cry it out. Let them throw that tantrum. Finally, empower them to think for themselves. Ask open-ended questions. Questions like, if this happens again, what do you think you can say? Or what, what do you think you can do? Or what is the best thing to hold on to? It is not my fault because they will be made to believe it is their fault. So just, just program them the right way. If you want to learn about this principle in depth and detail, you may want to check my course out, my program, Master Co-Parenting with the Narcissist, which just got an update and I released it yesterday. I am running a discount on it right now. If you want to enroll, you can click the I button above or the link in the description of this episode. Another thing that you would want to do is create safety for them. How? 
communi- conversation to them. Be communicative. Talk to them. Just don't cover it up. The wound is really deep. It, need, it needs stitches. And that is going to be a process for you. You can't just cover it up and say that, oh, let's, let's push it under the rug and then it will be resolved. Of course, that's not going to happen. The issue is going to get worse later and then you're going to feel bad about it. Communicate. Talk about things. Sit with them. Play with them. Spend time with them. Most importantly, help them feel safe around you, but at the same time, discipline them properly. Say no. When they throw a tantrum, hold space, but at the same time, show them what it is like to process anger in a healthy way. They can't go around hurting people or destroying things. Children are more intelligent than adults. They don't believe in what you say. Show them. If you yourself are reactive and you are struggling a lot, that is going to traumatize them. We call that vicarious traumatization. Show them, set examples. Whatever you teach them, show them exactly. Don't tell them. For example, they don't want to brush their teeth in the evening before going to bed. Now you can force them. That's not going to work. They'll hate you for it. Show them why. What is your intention? You don't want their teeth to go bad. So what can you do? Show them a video, for example, and show them exactly what happens if you don't clean your teeth. Then later, the outcome is painful tooth extraction. So they will understand why. What is your point? And then you will see a big breakthrough. They'll follow through. All in all, I can say, don't be an unconscious parent. Be a heart-centered parent. Be connected with your own body, with your own impulses. Understand your child's behavior. Learn about parenting. It's one of the most difficult jobs to do, let alone parenting with a narcissist. That makes it even more complicated. And if you want to learn in depth exactly what to do and what not to do and what to say, everything, I have covered it in my program, Master Co-Parenting with a Narcissist that I released yesterday. You can enroll right now by clicking the i button above or link in the description of this episode. Trust yourself. Don't be afraid of hurting the child. Don't be an anxious parent. That makes it really difficult for the child to navigate the world. Be centered in your truth. Be grounded in your truth. Show them the truth when it when they bring it to you. Don't cover it up. Reprogram their brain. Notice what they're believing about themselves because of how the narcissist is treating them and just extract those beliefs and replace them with positive ones. For example, I am worthless. Put in, you are worthy, you're beautiful, you're acceptable. Keep reprogramming. This is one of the biggest projects you will ever, ever do. So put in everything that you can put in. With that, let's bring this episode to an end. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll talk to you in the next one. Until then, as always, let the healing begin and continue.